Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And this time I've got a full review for you on a Tier 5 German tank destroyer, the Stug Beer. This tank is the reward, well, at least the first reward, for the personal set of missions, meaning that it, it's quite common. I'm going to let you know everything there is to know about this tank, and also then follow it up with some Ace Tanker gameplay. So to be able to get the Stugfeer, you have to complete a set of personal missions. Here we can see it's the first reward tank in Campaign 1, and let's hope they're going to do a second campaign fairly soon. To receive it, you're going to have to complete between 60 to 75 missions, depending on whether you want to do the final mission in the set for each of the different tank classes in the game with honors. There is already a Stug in the game. Here we see the Stug 3 Ausführung G. A tank that most people will have played at least one time or another because the German tank destroyer line is very popular. So let's see how the Stugfeer holds up to its non-reward counterpart. So firstly, let me clarify that the Stugfeer is special because it can never meet tier 7 tanks. So of course, it doesn't want to really directly compete with the Stug 3, but we should still compare between them so that if you've played that tank, then you'll know what you're going to be getting yourself in for if you want to start playing this vehicle. And the main difference between these tanks is that the Stug Fear uses a lower tiered gun than the Stug 3. We see that it uses a 7.5cm 40 L48. When we look for the L48 on the Stug 3, we can see it's all the way down here and not nearly as good as the L70, which is the top gun on that tank. So one of the key differences between these guns is that the penetration is much lower on the Stug Fear than on the Stug 3. And so if you're getting shot by one of these tanks, really try and make use of your full armor. 110 millimeters is not enough to reliably penetrate a KV-1 as an example if he's angling his armor correctly. Whereas the 150 millimeters that you would have on the Stug 3 is far more capable. The alpha damage is also lower, 110 rather than 135, but at least you get a rate of fire increase to make up for this alpha damage disparity, which means that the DPMs between the vehicles are, is fairly similar. Unfortunately, the shell velocity is a little bit low, and so it's quite tricky to give those leading shots at least at very long range. But you do have a lot of ammo capacity in the Stugfeer, which allows you to dish out a large amount of damage, probably to kill the enemy team multiple times over, as we might be seeing in the gameplay later on. The aim time is better, 1.6 rather than 1.7. The accuracy is slightly worse though, but at least the dispersion is better while moving, as well as when turning the tank, but it's the same when just turning the turret when you're stationary. And so that means that the Stugfeer is able to keep moving and then stop and be more accurate faster than the Stug 3, but it's going to be less accurate when it is stationary and fully aimed. Unfortunately, the tank gets 6 degrees of gun depression compared to the 7 degrees the Stug 3 has, and also the gun traverse, i.e. how far it can aim to the left and to the right, is much worse than on the Stug 3. As we can see here, here's the Stug Fear aiming to the left, 10 degrees to the left, 10 degrees to the right with 6 degrees of gun depression, whereas on the Stug 3, much further to the left, much further to the right, and 1 extra degree of gun depression, which can mean all the difference when you're looking at the flexibility of a vehicle. The Stug Fear is just slightly slower at 38 kilometers an hour, but it has a much worse engine. 300 horsepower gives this vehicle the kind of power to weight ratio of a fairly slow heavy, unfortunately. Whereas the Stug 3 is more like a fairly fast medium tank, but this is kind of balanced out with the ground resistances. Certainly on medium terrain, not so much on hard terrain though, really. And that means that you're going to suffer with the traverse speed of the tank, which is 44 compared to 47. The armor profiles of these vehicles do look similar from the front. Let's just take a quick look at that. Here's a 3D model for the Stug Fear. The only part of this tank that actually has that 80 millimeters of frontal armor is this lower plate here and also this mid plate here. The whole part of this tank here is just 30 millimeters, but it is very well angled, which means that you do have quite a good chance of ricocheting opponents that are shooting up at you. But as soon as they're shooting down on you, this armor is rather thin and there's only 10 millimeters in this whole area up here. So low tier artillery players rejoice. This is a big box of health to you, for you to pretty much one shot. The main difference in the armor between these two tanks is the fact that the Stugfeer does get this spaced armor on the side, albeit that it's only five millimeters covering the top of the tank. This does give you a slight increase, especially against high explosive rounds. Or if anybody is using really low tier heat rounds, it might help you out. When we look at the Stug Dry, it doesn't have any of that space protection, but really, let's just take a look at how much that, that means. Let's angle both the tanks at about 45 degrees. So the Stugfeer has about 40 millimeters of effective side armor, 
whereas the Stuckdrei has about 35 millimeters, sometimes slightly less. It's not really going to make a world of difference. So I guess it means it's more of a, a cosmetic kind of feel, the Stug beer. And I, I do really like the side skirts, they do look nice. Unfortunately, the Stug beer gets the same terrible view range that the Stuckdrei has 310 meters. That's not enough to ever, no matter how good your crew, consumables you use or binoculars to get up to about 430 meters which can be disappointing because of course you really need to play this a long range sniper and not an assault gun you only have 360 hit points that gets one shot by pretty much every 105 millimeter derp gun if it manages to penetrate you of course so that about sums it up for the stuck fear let's get stuck into some gameplay <laughs> So here we go, we are top tier on Malinovka, but uh, that's really not unusual considering that this tank does get preferential matchmaking, so if you've ever wanted to have a, a tank with preferential matchmaking that isn't a premium tank, and usually quite rare premium tanks to pick up, well here's your chance in the, the Stug Fear, and it's always nice to not have to deal with tier 7 tanks. I, I can't imagine this tank doing very well against a T29 <laughs> with 110 millimeters of penetration and only 158 on its premium rounds. That's really not going to be able to contest uh, a Tiger or a T29 very well at all. But then again, not many tier 5 tanks do very well against a T29. Anyway, I digress. Let's focus on the mobility of the Stug Fear here. Not too brilliant. Going along this flat at about 30. Actually, that's, that's not too bad. 30, that's all right. And I want to get into this forward position here. I want to set up my binoculars and I want to see if I can put some pain on my opponent. But of course, when you're in a tank with not the best armor, not the highest amount of hit points, you really don't want to get spotted. So I want to try and keep my opponents at long range. One of the best ways to win at low tiers is to have exceedingly good view range because generally low tier players are quite often not playing with 100% commanders like I am in this tank. Of course I'm going to be playing with a 100% commander in this tank. It's a reward vehicle, and so if I have any German tank destroyer in the game, I can take that crew and I can put it in this vehicle with absolutely no penalty. It's the same with all of the premium tanks in the game, if you did not know. And you will be surprised how many people keep questioning me, asking me how I move my crew for free. They, I guess they think that I have some kind of little perk. But let's focus in on this. So my first AP rounds had pretty much no chance of going through this Excelsior. So I fire a few APCR rounds here. Remember, this is premium ammunition we're firing. Now I'm going to load standard rounds again as we take shots at this Matilda 4 on the enemy team. Now remember, this is not the tier, uh, the tier 4 Matilda. I know that's a bit confusing considering the name. This is actually the tier 5 Soviet premium medium tank Matilda. So he pulls back. He doesn't really want to take any more hits. And this is really the bread and butter of this tank. You you frankly want to Kemp Bush, right? Uh, that's it. That's that's the strategy in the Stug Fear. Camp Bush and hopefully be able to shoot opponents that, that can't see you. Generally, that's kind of low-tier gameplay in a nutshell, more or less, at least on a map such as Malinovka. So that Excelsior is going to try and push forward. And remember, while his turret armor is very good and his frontal and rear hull armor is very good, his side armor is garbage. And so now we can open up on him. Don't need the premium rounds anymore. And we finish off the tier 5 premium British heavy tank. But oh gosh, we get spotted. Thank goodness we have six cents on this tank. So we pull back rapidly. We take a bunch of hits there. First one did no damage. Then we took a... Then we bounced an AP round. And then we took three subsequent hits, probably one from that T-67, or maybe from the, the Matilda 4 on the enemy team, and it looks like it was the T-50 below that was spotting us. So we go up, we're not spotted right now, and we take a blind fire from that Matilda 4. Obviously he doesn't like where I was camping, and he's being very persistent in blind firing. That's some pretty, pretty smart little moves there from that player. Definitely did shock me, and now I've been reduced to 8 hit points with 11 and a half minutes left on the game. But you know what, even if I was to die now, 914 damage in this tank, that is a decent result for a tier 5 tank destroyer. Of course, it's not the result that we want. I have to also be very afraid of the fact that these low tier self-propelled guns on the enemy team do have a very high rate of fire and they're more than happy to also blind fire the bushes. They want to try and dig me out. But I'm not that silly, I'm not going to drive up right now. I'm going to wait till things calm down a little bit before I can re-establish my position. Now remember in the garage I was talking about the fact that the Stug Fear has 310 meters view range and that kind of really does suck. Let's let's remember that I'm using a 100% commander here 
because I think it's come from my uh, Waffenträger Alf V100. I'm not sure if he has situational awareness or if it's the radio man or if he's got a... Uh, He's got recon as well, which increases my view range. But remember that I'm using chocolate. That's a premium consumable that increases my commander skill by 10%, but it will cost me either 10,000 or 20,000 credits, depending on whether you pre-purchase them when they're on sale, that will increase my view range, obviously, and also binoculars. Now take a look at the, the, the mini-map here for how good our view range can possibly get. I've pretty much maxed out the view range on the Stug beer here. There's, there's no real way to be getting any more view range apart from Brothers in Arms, which is another thing that I do have on this tank. So you are looking at a very experienced Stug Fear crew here. And they still don't ever get up until that 445 meter spotting distance cap. Now, of course, I can get up to about 430 meters view range, and that's decent, but it, it's just... It just still feels rather underwhelming when there are other Tier 5 tank destroyers that can get much more view range than the, the Stug here. So we're going to go and set up push again. We're going to Kemp push, try and find some spots. Really, where... Like, there's, there's no other way that I could be playing this right now. Alternatively, I guess I could be kind of skulking around at the back here. Possibly I could have tried to hold this location. But really, on, on Malinovka, in these low-tier games, you'd be silly to push in. You've got to try and wait for the enemies to make their mistake, especially when you're on eight hit points. I think the blind fires keep coming in. But now we're actually firing at an AMX-38, but two of our rounds miss and hit the uh, the light tank behind him, taking out the Panzer 3 a there. Hopefully we can finish off the AMX. Oh no, come on! Hit, 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 hit! Gonna fire one more blind one, I think. We don't quite manage to get him. Turn to the right, there's a Churchill, three advancing, maybe we can hit him. No, he's going to get behind the ridge line. There's no chance we're going to hit him anymore. And that's a shame because he's going to probably get into our two artillery. But luckily, our binoculars spot somebody in the distance. It's a KV-1S. We put one into him and gosh, he has a lot of hit points. We're going to have to shoot him a hell of a lot more to be able to take him down. The enemies are closing in on me and this is where you want to have a good camo crew. If for some reason you had to train a fresh crew in this tank, your first skill would be camouflage. Just... 100% camouflage. If you don't, then, in my opinion, well, I guess you can do you can do whatever you want, but I, 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 I strongly advise you to take camouflage in this tank, because as we've seen, the armor isn't incredible, and your hit points are, are very slight and negligible, so taking hits in this tank should be like a, a last resort where you maybe want to take one shot from something that does 100 alpha damage to you and you're hopefully going to put two or three rounds into him to return. Otherwise you're going to end up doing quite low damage in this tank really and not going to be able to have the impact or carry the games that you need to. I'm trying to get into a position where we can use our six degrees of gun depression. And remember we have to stay stationary to get our binoculars activated. I really don't want that KV-1S to come behind me and I'm just praying that our artillery takes him out or the Marder 2 shuts him down right now. I can't afford to get spotted right now because it's quite likely they've either got tanks here, the artillery will focus me, or alternatively the T-67 or the Matilda who have been firing at me from this location will shut me down. Thankfully the Marder 2 does his job taking down the KV-1S on the enemy team and we can return to the bush. I know this is such hardcore gameplay really, but... That's how it is, really, at low tiers in a tank like this. You can't afford to be aggressive. You have to, if you want to have big carries, be patient, especially on a, on a map like this. If I was to rush into the enemy team right now, I'm pretty sure that T-67 on the enemy team, who seems to be quite a good player, hmm, yeah, T-67 is hard to pad in those tanks, hey, will probably go up onto the hill, activate his binoculars and a cabinet, and start to rain death on my team, so I need to chill. I'm wondering what that OI experimental is doing down there. Hopefully he's going to, to roar into this game. You know, an OI experimental, that tier 5 Japanese heavy. I bought one of those for myself the other day, and I have to admit they're completely broken. Really, it's one of the most broken tanks that I've seen in a while. So, the Panzerkampfwagen T25 has managed to, to push around unspotted. We didn't manage to see him. Our view range not quite enough. We're trying to put some shots into his back. We connect one, and now we're going to fire a bunch blind. Remember, this tank has a huge amount of ammunition. So you don't really need to worry about it. 
Now, I have fired a lot of shells this game, but we've still got more than enough to, to deal with uh, the rest of the enemy team. If I was in a tier 6 match, I'd probably have to be a little bit more careful with my ammunition usage because people have more hit points. But really, when you're engaging tier 3 and tier 4 and tier 5 opponents, just nobody really has the hit points apart from the heavy tanks. But thankfully, they're all dead. So I felt in now that with five minutes left on the game that I wasn't really going to be able to win it by just sitting in the bush anymore. So God forbid we're going to actually have to leave the same spot that we've been in for pretty much the last eight minutes and to, to go out and try and find our opponents. So the most important thing to do when you're advancing in the Stuttgart is to find locations where you can hopefully spot from the bushes by using binoculars. Now the M41 HMC on my team says just defend. And you know what? He'd be right if we wanted to get a draw, but I have no interest in getting a draw here. You've, you've got to know when it's time to make your move, and exactly what I was talking about, that T-67 shuts down the, the left A on my team. That's, uh, that's really unfortunate, and he's exactly where I thought he would be up on the hill. That's the correct position to be in. Really a T-67 with a good crew, good camo, uh, good camo crew at least, and some decent view range. We'll, we'll be able to just pick apart these kind of caliber of players. It's, it's just not fair, really. They're probably playing with... Um, 50%, maybe one, well, maybe not 50%, maybe like 70% commanders in those tanks. They, they just can't see the T67. He's going to go around and just, just pick them apart. And that really is the low tier meta in a way. It's kind of all these pedo bears going around with ridiculous view range and high rates of fire, just like me, and, and taking people out. So we spot the T46, and this is very important. I pull back behind the bush, I fire through the bush. There's no way that I can be spotted. Usually, if I wasn't firing through a bush here, I would wait for my camo net to be activated. But there was no need for me to wait for my camo net to be activated because I was significantly... Well, I was far enough behind the bush so that it wasn't transparent and so therefore it conceals my position. Remember, if the bush is transparent and you fire, the bush isn't going to work nearly as well. So I'm going to make my way up into more bushes activate my binoculars. I think you're seeing a pattern here, really, aren't you? But lo and behold, actually, this platoon is rushing us. Okay, I want to kill the AMX first. He's the hard one to kill. I don't really have to aim at the T-46. Great result. Now, the key thing there for me was to decide which one I wanted to kill first. Fair enough, the T-46 was, was getting closer to me, but the armor on that tank is just garbage, and he's never going to, to be able to, to bounce one of my shots. Whereas I thought, and I, I still feel, that I think the armor, the armor on the AMX-38 is vastly better and would at least have a chance to be able to pull off a ricochet against me. That was a, a, a pretty disgusting execution of that platoon. I just feel so bad. Look at this. I've played more games than probably half of the enemy team combined. Actually, I shouldn't feel too bad. Look how many 30,000 game players there are. So we spot an AMX-105 on the enemy team, just rushing out. We wait for our camo net to activate. Put one into him. Put two into him. He didn't even see us. It's completely balanced, right? That's what a 100% camo crew and a camo net will do for you. But the T-67 has been spotted in the east, and he shuts down another one of my artillery pieces. But thankfully, the... M41 HMC manages to take out the Matilda at the same time. So we've got seven kills, 2,254 damage, and there's a one minute and 47 seconds left. I need to get into the cap circle before one minute 40. I just managed to make it in. That means that I've got enough time to cap. And now the Lefe spots me, and I spot him. We put one into him. No point in moving right now. It would be a mistake to move. Luckily, I think he hits the flagpole. Or he hits some kind of rubble in front of us and manages to, to hit it. But there was no point in moving there. It's an accurate artillery, and the longer that I give him to aim at me, the worse it's going to get. And so right there, it's about, at least in my opinion, when, when dealing with artillery, unless you're in a highly mobile tank that has a turret and can drive sideways onto their aim and also shoot at them, when you're in a tank destroyer, you just have to say, right, if you hit me, you hit me. And stand your ground and make your shots. 
So right now it's super important to know that I have enough time to cap. And remember, you've got to be thinking about getting inside the cap circle before you see like 1 minute and 40 seconds, because if you leave it any later, you've got no chance to cap. And me sitting in this cap circle would be a big waste of time. The only reason to sit in a cap circle at this point is to think that the enemy team uh, are going to just come back to come and kill you. So I know that the T-67 on the enemy team has 287 hit points. And I have eight. And so that means I have no intention of firing at him. All I want to do is to spot him and then hopefully use the buildings to avoid getting hit by him. You can see I actually reload a high explosive round thinking that if he rushed me, the only chance that I had right now was to two shot him with high explosive rounds. But all I have to do is survive for 10, 9, 8, avoid, 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 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and he never sees me. And we take down the game. Comes around the corner, fires a shot. But thankfully, I was saved by the bell, and his, his shell just disappears into the world of tanks ether. And we managed to secure a decent win here. So I was very happy to take this one down. What a result for the Stug beer. We had to do everything that we could to win this 45%, especially when there are other skilled players in very powerful tanks, such as the T67 on the enemy team. This game really wasn't skill or micro reflex intensive. It was more about knowing what to do in the correct situation and using the game mechanics to your advantage. Number one, it's about knowing what crew skills to take for your tank destroyers. I definitely prefer taking camouflage, especially on a low tier tank destroyer like this. If you get shot, you're really not going to be able to repair your tracks in time before the low alpha damage, generally high rate of fire tanks shoot you again. In conjunction with further maximizing your camouflage and also your view range with the binoculars and then using bush after bush after bush in strategic positions to know roughly where people are going to get spotted, slow advancing and making sure that you stop using the bushes to be able to spot out. Knowing about shooting through bushes while still maintaining full firepower at decent concealment and then finally making sure you know exactly how long you need to cap on the standard game mode and especially on the encounter game mode while predicting where your enemies are going to come from and then to know how to use buildings to hide from them to take down the victory. One of the first things that disappoints a lot of people about the Stugfear is the amount of credits that it gets. I think a lot of people expect this to get that premium tank bonus to credits, which it just frankly doesn't. This is one of the best games that I've ever seen in a Stugfear. 2,500 damage and we made 52,000 credits. When we take away our ammunition cost, and maybe we also take away that chocolate cost. We made between eight or 18,000 credits, depending on how cheaply you bought the chocolate. And so don't try and grind for this tank thinking that you're suddenly going to be able to pay off all of your bills because it's really not going to work. Nevertheless, one thing that the Stugfear does do very well is crew training. 5,436 experience for our double here, for 1,510 base. Look at the bonus experience for it being a premium vehicle, 906 bonus experience. And remember that this is multiplied by an additional 0.5 as it counts as a premium vehicle for crew training purposes. We received a Radley Walters medal here for our eight kills, a high caliber, and also an invader. We fired a lot of shots here, quite a few of them blind, but we still managed to hit 32 and 27 of those penetrated. And I think this replay really does truly sum up the Stug Fear. It doesn't have the armor to take a beating. And its gun performance is so lackluster that Wargaming had to give this vehicle preferential matchmaking. I think it's the only reward tank that does have preferential matchmaking. I would probably be more inclined to play this tank if it had a slightly better gun or just perhaps better view range. But frankly, the lower the view range that you have, the closer so that you have to allow your enemies to get towards you, which lowers your chance of being able to remain undetected while dealing damage to them, which is how you have to play your lightly armored tank destroyers. This tank is not like a Jagdpanther or a Jagdpanther 2 or even a Ferdinand where it can use its frontal armor to weather the storm. To be effective in this tank, you have to get an unfair advantage over your opponent. And really, the spotting mechanics are the only way to do so. And so all in all, I think the Stugfear might be a bit of a disappointment to players who have done a set of 60 or 75 missions. But one thing I would recommend is to not become discouraged because the T28 HTC, well, at least that's novel. And the T55A, that's a fantastic tank. And I guess it takes a lot of effort. But the Object 260 is, is a lovely tier 10 heavy. And so I personally think that this tank is one that you'll probably just play a few games in, maybe get an ace tanker like me, and then probably leave it in your garage.
and look for something that's maybe a little bit more competitive and even a little less boring. But don't let me put you off this tank. If this looks like your cup of tea, go for it. And if you manage to get yourselves in positions like I luckily did here on Malinovka, well, you can still have some amazing games. And so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, or maybe it was just useful to you. If it was, please consider giving it a like down below. It really helps the channel out. And to all of you guys still trying to get through maybe your last few personal missions, best of luck. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic, and hopefully I'll see you soon.